first thing I'd like to say is just really impressed with the way our guys are attacking these practices and the physical nature of them. You know, at this time of year, sometimes uh, can wear on guys. And instead, these guys have been really aggressively attacking it, um, which is shows that our guys understand that we play an opponent that is really talented and, uh, you know, has done some really good things this year. And we have to be at our very best in playing against them. Uh, and that being said, open questions. Do you have to tell Blake in particular to just avoid kicking to this guy at all costs? You have to have a plan. Um, you also have to have confidence in your players. So I think mean, you have to incorporate everything possible to negate them from having an explosive play because they have changed the game. And they certainly pose a threat every time the ball is kicked. What does I bring that makes him kind of unique in the receiving game specifically? Because you talked about the, the catch and go and the ability on the screens, but like, mm -hmm. but what else does he bring from that? He's just a very polished route runner. You know, it's hard to tell what he is running. When you're, when you're a good receiver, makes everything look the same. You can't tell whether to go, a stop, a hitch, a nine stop, right? A dig, an out cut, and that's what he does. He just, he can drop his hips. He gets in and out of breaks unbelievably well and smoothly. Um, tremendous balance of body control. He. The contested catch for him is he wins the majority of them. So he's a complete receiver, and he's a guy that also has the explosiveness to run right by it. And he said this late in the season, you know, it's, it's very much a grind, even just the day-to-day, -day, in and out of practice, in and out of filming. And how do, you, how do you as a coach kind of combat that that late season grind and starts to kind of pile up and hit you? I don't think it's a grind. I mean, <laughs> what's what else would I be doing? I mean, what, I mean... A grind is getting in traffic, man, and having to fight that or get in line and get yourself a double cheeseburger and wait 30 minutes. I mean, this is the best stuff in the world. It's uh, I, We just, our guys have developed the DNA that we know that this, every single bit of this stuff is really, really important. And our regimen and blueprint is designed to help you get stronger as the season goes on. So um, it's more, it's excitement, you know, it really is. I mean, just, I don't know, that's my best way to i just didn't understand that as a grind the grind is it's good stuff man you gotta come join us in the morning it's, you love it great where's What's up brian? charlie mm. where's brian addison right now in his development oh, do you think yeah. there's a chance for him now to get back in the mix oh he's he's gonna be an excellent player and he's doing a lot of great stuff right now full confidence in him as a playmaker uh in the running game as well on special teams Brian is a special athlete, and he's getting better and better and better. Count on him. You're going to be seeing a lot of Brian Addison around him. How do you guys, I mean, you talked a lot about acknowledging all of the outside noise. The last couple of times the playoff committee has come out with their rankings, you, you know, you've been right there on, on ESPN almost immediately after. What, what is the thought process and trajectory of just getting yourself out there, getting Oregon as a program out there right mm -hmm. on the heels when those rankings come out? Um, you know, I, again, it's an honor to be, you know, placed in that conversation. I think, you know, as much as sometimes people fear the noise that comes with that, I think the acknowledgement of the fact that a lot of teams are in that position and us being one of them, because teams in front of us have faltered, whether it be to them listening to the noise or a tough game or maybe being caught off guard. So there's, there's nothing but positivity to it, especially when you handle it the right way and you attack processes and practices like we did today. All right, you go back to the spring for a moment with Jawan and just the timetable for him personally in getting here where he had a lot going on in life uh, before coming here where frankly a lot of people probably would have waited. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, so that process of your role in that and, and helping him deal with all that he was dealing with at that time. Well, I mean, when, when talking about guys like this, I, I defer any and all just, I would say, credit and merit to the guy, the player, and, and Jawan. I just... The guy really has approached and attacked every bit of adversity and opportunity uh, like a man on a mission, you know, and things were going really well, but he had just gone through a lot. And sometimes that doesn't hit you until later or whatnot, but he's always fought through, brought a, a really positive attitude, and then bam, has an injury to start things off and misses a good amount of games. And, and all of a sudden you find yourself, man, I'm a, my fifth year, I've made this move. I think a lot of guys, quite frankly, may not have had the resiliency and the mental toughness to overcome. Not even 10% of that. Yet here we stand in week 11, and he's become one of the most you know, dominant players in college football and has really become a huge part of what we do here. And not just the football part. I'm talking about the off the field stuff as well, as a leader, as a guy that people trust. So extremely happy for him. 
And I, I think, I really believe this in watching him practice, that he's still getting better and better and better. He just throws himself in every rep you possibly can, and he's playing with a lot of confidence. Could you imagine, like, put yourself in his shoes there, getting that call at a pro day mm -hmm. of tragedy and driving home and dealing with all that and that kind of time and then leaving to come here inside, all inside of a week? Yeah. No, it's not many people could handle and manage all that, and he has, you know, so... He's a guy of strong faith. Um, he really he loves his family. He loves his teammates. And uh, he deserves all the credit in the world. Uh, why do you think fans are leaving after a shout or a halftime? Like, what do you think about that? What do I think about? Fans leaving after a shout. Like, you know, like, you guys are up by, like, 20 points. And then you see fans wait till shout. And they do the dance and everything. And then they right. leave right after, right after that. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they had to go do something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Maybe, maybe we'll say politely say, "Hey, we'll play a shot again." I mean, I don't know. Just, I mean, I love our fans. They do a great, great job. You know, if they felt they had to go after, you know, hopefully they'll stay longer. But if they have to go, you know, they gotta go. Be nice to the fans, man. We have the best fans in America. Yeah, you know? no. <laughs> I would like you to ask the question: What do you think about the most awesome fans in America that make a crazy amount of noise? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>